Yeah, so I'm Henry Buckley. Uh, I'm Senior Manager of Experience Design. Um, I've been with Virgin Atlantic uh, nearly eight years now. Um, and yeah, our remit kind of covers all of the customer proposition from, uh, you know, the check-in spaces to lounges to onboard products uh, to even, you know, the service design and um, any of the soft products as well. What was the experience like designing the A330 900neo? I mean, any aircraft program, to be honest, is an amazing experience. Um, you know, just to be able to affect that customer proposition um, is just amazing. Um, and be able to kind of just influence it through, you know, design and creative thinking to create amazing experiences um, was just something that I really relished. Um, obviously, any aircraft program is sort of three to four years in length. Um, so when you first start out, uh, you know that it's quite far off before you actually get anything into service and actually make that meaningful difference. Um, so it is definitely a long slog to kind of get to the end, but um, yeah, it's an amazing kind of piece to be involved with. And with the A330 Neo, did you run into any design issues uh, during the design process? Any design issues? Question. Um, I don't think any issues in particular. I think, you know, there's always that kind of trade off between. Um, you know, commercial points of view versus customer experience points of view and making sure that, you know, as an advocate for customer and brand, you know, we make the right decisions for that. Um, so I don't think there was anything uh, per se that really challenged us, but, um, you know, there's kind of careful attention you need to pay around certain decisions, um, you know, throughout the process. So now Virgin Atlantic has made a lot of evolutions across their years. Their 40th birthday is going to be coming up next year. What do you envision for the next 40 years to look like? Like, What's your next big leap that you're looking to do in terms of the cabin design? You know, I think that, you know, we come from a heritage of, you know, 40 years of innovation in, in all of our products offering, whether it's on the ground or on board. Um, so, with, you know, with every new aircraft we enter into service, we look at how we can evolve that experience. You know, we're not the kind of airline that just takes a cut, cookie cutter um, kind of definition and roll it out across the fleet. We're always looking to introduce new product, new technology, um, new innovations to our customers um, so that they get the best customer experience possible. In terms of the next four years, it's a difficult question. Um, you know, I think that we continually review our consumer trends. Um, so we want to see exactly what the wants and needs are of both our consumers of the future and our customers today. So we're fixing all the pain points that are currently in service and we're also looking to the future of what people might want you know, when we deliver the next big program. Um, we always look at, you know, how do we maximize uh, the, you know, the usage of our onward social spaces and how we actually make sure that it's both usable for our customers but also for our crew as well. Mm -hmm. We know that our crew are the centerpiece of all of our offerings there, you know, um, they're centerpiece to our experience um, and they're the ones that actually kind of create those natural interactions with our customers and almost direct the process and, you know, direct the experience. Um, so we want to make sure that when we offer social spaces that the that, that crew feel like they're able to naturally interact with our customers there um, and, you know, bring experiences to life. Now, the A330 Neo being Virgin Atlantic's newest products, um, what are some certain aspects of the product that are different compared to the rest of the fleet or even other airline products out there? Yeah, okay, so um, so in particular, you know, we've got the Retreat Suite, which is the front row of our upper-class cabin. Um, so there are two center seats that are essentially an uplifted version of our upper-class seat. Um, and, you know, this space is essentially an opportunity with it being a front row monument. Uh, we've essentially opened up the footwell and added in two buddy seats to allow customers to then um, essentially invite other companions up to join them for dual dining or even quad dining scenarios. Um, so there's a really nice kind of social, uh, almost like social private space at the front of the cabin there. Um, you know, we've continued to evolve our social space offering at door two. Um, so, you know, we come from a heritage of offering an onboard bar. Uh, but with the 330neo, we actually continued the evolution of the loft, which was first introduced in the AQ50. Um, and, you know, in line with kind of consumer trends, we've added in some more kind of self-serve offerings. We know that consumers really want to be able to kind of graze on demand some of the uh, food and beverage products on offer. Um, so we've actually added in some fridge freezers in there. Um, we offer frozen products such as ice creams and then also chilled drinks as well. Um, and that is all above and beyond what we already offer, you know, in the normal kind of uh, F&D service that we offer to your seats as well. So it's all in addition to that. Uh, we've also added in wireless charging uh, within our upper class cabin um, and actually we're the first airline to offer it to our premium customers as well. 
Um, so that was the first for us to actually launch that. Uh, we've got our fastest onboard Wi-Fi, so we've got some really good uh, connection speeds there. So anybody, you know, connecting in from a business point of view or trying to keep up with their uh, loved ones back home, um, you know, they're able to do that on demand. It seems uh, in-flight entertainment is the big push for airlines. What are in-flight entertainment options are available on the A330 across the entire aircraft? Um, okay, so I mean, I mean, one of the major kind of uplifts uplift that we've made for the 330 is the inclusion of the Bluetooth audio. Mm -hmm. um, so in every seat, you can actually connect your own Bluetooth headsets to that uh, monitor. Um, so that's actually also really good from an accessibility point of view because customers with um, you know, Bluetooth hearing aids can actually connect to that product as well. Oh, wow. uh, so it's a really nice little update there. Um, in terms of the arrest of the in-flight entertainment, you know, we've really maximized the screen sizes throughout every cabin. So paid real attention to every single seat on board. Um, our economy product is now uplifted to a 13.3 inch monitor, uh, which is really great uplift. Um, and then also in the retreat suite, we've actually got 27 inch touchscreen monitors there. So it's a really kind of cinema experience for our plus customer. So now legroom is the big controversial topic across airlines. Seems like many airlines nowadays are reducing the amount of legroom. What's yeah. the average legroom on the A33900 Neo in the economy product? So we have 156 seats uh, in a standard economy config, which is a 31 inch pitch. Uh, we believe the 31 inch pitch is a really kind of healthy amount of space to, to give that, that cabin. Uh, and it gives us really nice leg room in that space. Uh, we've also got 28 uh, economy delight seats as well, which receive a 34 inch pitch. Um, and actually we keep that as a baseline across all of our product offerings across our fleet. So yeah, 34 and 4 inch pitch on economy delight and 31 in economy. Uh, we've also got 38 inch in premium um, and 44 inch up front in our class. As we close out our tour of the A330 NEO, Virgin Atlantic's newest aircraft redefines the aviation industry with a new aircraft that is well thought out in comfort, style, and productivity. A huge thank you to Henry Buckley of Virgin Atlantic for discussing this remarkable aircraft. And until next time, safe travels.